Hi, I'm Chad. I'm a Gen X grown up. I support Gen X grown up through Patreon, and you can too at patreon.com slash Gen X grown up. Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 122 of the Gen X <laughs> Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining me as always is Mo. Hey, everybody. <laughs> of course, you know that George is here. Hey, how's it going, guys? In this episode, we watch a new TV series that turns a common tile-based pastime into a thrilling competitive sport. Check out a free Windows application to help you get a handle on your files, no matter how disorganized they may be. And play a magical board game where you must combine spells to become the ultimate battle wizard. All of those topics and many more coming up in this show. But before we jump into that, it is time for some fourth listener email. We know there's the three of us, and if anybody else takes time to listen to the show, they are our fourth listener. Fourth listener this time <laughs> around is Karen. Hey, Karen. Hey, Karen. Karen wrote in with the subject line, Playground Episode, the backtrack oh, from uh, not too long one. ago. Karen says, I'm listening to the Playground Episode now, and I just got to the part where you're talking about how hot the metal gets on the monkey bars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. We had a Burger King here that had a spiral slide we called the Screamer because of during the hot months. <laughs> I can see where this is going. That thing would burn your legs and your bottom all the way down, and we loved it. <laughs> uh, Karen, by the way, says she's in Georgia, not too different from Florida, also blistering hot there. Yeah, those that thing was, and you said, George, you would often have the like the, the 70s, uh, the short shorts that didn't yeah. go up very far. And yeah. Kind of, and they would roll up sometimes because it was hot. And it would, well, I mean, yeah. they didn't really mm. have to roll up. They were already too short to begin with. So. <laughs> they didn't have far yeah, to go, true. did they? <laughs> She says, thinking about it now, we were so weird because they loved going down the screamer. You're in good company, Karen. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) She wraps it up by saying forever, fourth listener. I love that salutation. Karen. Thank you, Karen. We appreciate your writing and we love it every time the fourth listener writes in. If you would like your email feature here on the show, it's easy. Just hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. We read every single one and most of them, like Karen's, eventually make the show. All right, Jets, with that good business behind us, it's time to jump into the meat of episode 122 right after this stick around i'm bruce martin host of pit pass indy each week i go behind the scenes of the ntt indycar series and introduce our listeners to the biggest stars of indycar which features the indianapolis 500 as its cornerstone event The men and women that compete in IndyCar may be the bravest athletes in all of sport as danger lurks around every corner. They are able to look danger in the eye without flinching. That is why the NTT IndyCar Series features the best racing on the planet. Join me every week as we talk to the stars of IndyCar, including the legends of the Indianapolis 500 on Pit Pass Indy from Evergreen Podcast. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. When the family's all together, life's the best that it can be. Life's more fun when you're munching one, when you're munching Fritos. Because Fritos goes with fun, and fun makes family memories. And all the young, life's more fun when you're munching Fritos. Munching Fritos, life's more fun when you're munching one, when you're munching one, when you're munching Fritos. Life's more fun when you're munching one, when you're munching Fritos. Spread corn chips. It's time to get the ball rolling, talking about media that we have been checking out recently. Of course, it could be a television or film or books or comics or music, whatever it is. Uh, And I want to get started with something I was looking forward to last episode. And I think George gave me some uh, a hard time that I was looking forward to it. It The Nicolas Cage film. (laughs) 
What? Yes, of course I gave you shit for looking forward to this piece of crap movie. What? Have you seen it? I don't have to. It's well, Nicholas you know Cage playing crap? himself. Oh, that anyway. in and of itself makes it a piece of crap. <laughs> okay. It was Nicholas Cage in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which alone, the <laughs> title alone just tells you a lot of what you need to know oh, about yeah. this film. So have either of you seen this as well? Did you get a chance to see it. this? I have seen you it. have? No, I just told you I haven't seen it. I'm not going to watch this thing. There's just no chance. No. Well, you're missing out on what is a fun film, my friend. Mm-mm. So your prejudgment about Nicolas Cage is doing you a disservice. If you haven't seen it or don't know about it, we talked about it a little bit during my Looking Forward last time. This is Nicolas Cage, as you said, playing himself and also stars Pedro Pascal, I think is his name, who's the Mandalorian, right? Mm-hmm. In the Disney yep. series. And the whole concept is he's playing himself kind of, it's a bit of a parody of himself, but the, the concept is he's a really down and out Nicolas Cage and he's not making any money and he's really destitute. Uh, destitute's an exaggeration, but so he accepts what his <laughs> That's talent- not an exaggeration in real life, however. <laughs> no? Okay. He's damn near broke because of all those IRS tax bills. But that's he the keeps getting money and making movies. movies. Yeah, that's why he keeps having to make the movies because he's paying off that tax bill. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris plays his agent in this film and he sets up a deal for a million dollars. He can go be a guest at the birthday party of this alleged suspected probable like drug kingpin like crime world guy but he didn't even know that at the time though right he just thought it was some rich guy he didn't know that necessarily but yeah. this quickly becomes pretty apparent right oh yeah yeah, yeah. And it turns out at the same time there's supposed to be a sting going on of these guys by some uh, law enforcement agents and he gets kind of drafted into finding out about this guy and if he is in fact the drug kingpin or whatever he is and mm-hmm. has he abducted this girl <laughs> and <laughs> some of the most cringy parts Parts of this was they had a uh, a digitally de-aged version of Nicolas Cage, yeah. who he would sometimes imagine. Yeah, what is he called Nikki? And he would sometimes talk to. Wait a minute, like the young Nicolas Cage from okay. like what Hold movie? Is that? Peggy Sue got married or something like that. Like this that is a did. movie yeah. starring Nicolas Cage. Yes. Playing an exaggerated version of himself, yep. who is also talking to a younger version of himself. That's more in this movie. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Wow. What could go wrong? Exactly. Save myself two hours. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> no. Well, it's okay. What did you think, Mo? You got to see it. Do you I think it was bad? I enjoyed the crap out of it. Actually, it's like yeah. one is just like it's. I, I applaud anybody who could poke fun of themselves. And he totally mm-hmm. he pokes on himself throughout the whole thing. I mean, he was everything yeah. else, Nick Clay, that you, all his cliches he was making fun of. And to tell you the truth, the story wasn't bad. I thought it was a pretty funny story. And I liked the relationship to him and Pedro Pascal. I thought it was pretty, it was interesting. It was, it was a fun friendship between yeah. them. Pedro Pascal stole most of the scenes that they were in together, yeah. honestly. He, he's like upstage Nicolas Cage throughout the majority of it. And look, when I went in, I said, it just needs to be what I think it is. Yeah. And it was exactly what I thought it was. In many ways, it's like a 90s movie like the the plot was pretty contrived it was just an excuse to get these people in this situation <laughs> right. to do some batshit crazy stuff, but which is pretty much what it was. But they sort of fun at that too. Like even the plot they did. of the actual yep. movie, they poke fun of itself. I mean, it's not one I'm going to go back and watch like, oh my God, I'm going to watch this every year kind of thing. But it's definitely one of like, if I was flipping channels, it was on, I wouldn't turn away from it. You know, I'd, I'd watch it, it again and watch yeah. it again. It was fun. Yeah. Well, you know, Rotten Tomatoes has it like around 87%-ish. Which is between like, uh Yeah, that's both on the critics and the audiences. So like, George is just rolling his eyes every time I say yeah. something positive about this, but think of all the films that I told you you thought would be bad and turned out to be okay, which is I'm about a 25% ratio, actually, of the ones you actually <laughs> did like. So this might fall in that. You never know. But I dug it. I'm glad I went to see it. Uh, you should give it a chance if you get it. It's not probably a full price movie for on your little A-list uh, gauge, but it's definitely a, you know, it's an A-lister. It's worth seeing if you get a chance to check it out for free. When it comes in your public domain, maybe. Maybe you can check yeah. it out. <laughs> Mo, how about you? What have you been watching, man? Okay. I'm not sure how to describe this one. It's a show called The Baby. Um, okay. It's on HBO Max and it's a British comedy. It's a dark comedy horror. Okay, let's, let's think of it that way. That's what it is. Okay. Um, it's about a young woman. All her friends are having kids. She's not liking it because it's interfering with her single life friendships. You know, like they can't mm-hmm. go out anymore, that kind of thing. You have to watch it, believe it, but somehow she has, she gets a baby. Like a baby appears. I won't go, if I get went to how she it gets would, a baby? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. You have to watch the All movie. Right. But the thing is that everywhere this baby goes, people die <laughs> like like Damien Owen kind of stuff or weird supernatural <laughs> like but it all seems like accidents but they all die people die all the way around this kid and she's kind of caught up with it and they only have one episode it's doing their show's doing like the one episode a week thing and it's like eight oh. episodes total 
But I saw the first episode and I'm like, I have to watch this. I have to figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> you know, she's trying to get rid of the baby. The baby keeps somehow winding back, getting back to her. You know, she's driving with the baby in the car. And the baby's sort of staring at her in a cute baby way until it doesn't stop. And then it becomes really creepy. The baby's actually looking at her. It's a weird, weird show. I don't recognize anybody who's in it. It's all like new actors, but mm-hmm. it's just a dark comedy. That's all I can say is it's dark horror comedy. Uh, if you get a chance to check it out, it absolutely should. It, it sounds like it's a very British kind of thing, isn't oh, it? Oh, extremely, yeah. extremely. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you go yeah. to the HBO website, I think you can even watch the first episode for free without having to subscribe. But okay. I think it's definitely worth the time to check out because it is a weird, if you like weird shows like this, it's definitely the one to go for. Mm, okay. The baby. Cool. The baby. What about you, George? What, what have you been checking out? Well, uh, nothing quite as contrived or crazy as the two of you have been watching, <laughs> apparently. So uh, just a simple little TV show called Domino Masters. Uh, we've watched Lego Masters for a couple of seasons now and enjoyed mm-hmm. that. This is yep. just another iteration of that style of show. But instead of Legos, now it's Dominoes. It's pretty fun. It does have a couple of people on there that you might recognize. Uh, one of the guys from Modern Family, he was one of the two husbands that were married um, mm-hmm. on that show. Or their neighbor. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Danica Keller from... Uh, Wonder Years fame. She's one of the judges on the show. It's cute. It's fun. I enjoy it because I like seeing the people get really frustrated while they're trying to build their dominoes in their time frame. Just like Lego Masters, they have mm-hmm. a you know a certain amount of time to build these massive Rube Goldberg domino things. Uh, they get like sixteen hours usually, and it's funny to watch the people as they're losing their shit when they knock stuff <laughs> over accidentally or something's not working. And then all of a sudden they wrap it all up in the last 30 seconds and Always. everything topples perfectly. So, <laughs> oh, OK. So I was starting to pick up on th- I was confused at first, but I'm like, how do they make dominoes into a TV show? But it's not yeah. playing the game dominoes. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not. It's like setting up dominoes. Yeah. So they fall over. Dom- <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like how riveting. It's like watching checkers. No, yeah. no. <laughs> watch people play Mahjong. No, really? it's not playing the game dominoes. It's domino ah. toppling Rube Goldberg machines that kind of stuff and they they have some very intricate sets and each night so far has had a different theme which is interesting like they have one that was all about the circus and another one that was about las vegas and they usually Hmm. pit three to four teams in an episode against each other and so many of the teams usually get to advance and a couple of teams usually are off the show from that point forward Hmm. so where do they find people to compete on this? Are there competitive <laughs> domino makers? There are. There? <laughs> Just like there's competitive Lego building competitions, yeah. there are competitive domino competitions. Really? I did really? not. The guy who's like the expert judge on the show, he's like uh-huh. got all kinds of world records and won all kinds of championships wow. or whatnot. Huh. But he is about as flat of a personality as you can imagine that person would be. <laughs> uh. Like he has no charisma whatsoever on the screen. Dominoes are his life. They are. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of the people that are on the show, it's very much like Lego Masters. You know, they find these people who have entered these competitions or maybe it was a family like there's one where it's the father the son and the daughter are a competition team uh there's other ones where Uh, kind of a backstory yeah they just kind of i get the impression that they looked at all the competitions that have been held around the country for Mm -hmm. the last couple years and said okay let's get this guy this guy and this guy they all do dominoes but they're also athletic so let's call them the triathletes and they put them together (laughs) i see yeah yeah and you said it wouldn't be contrived you're the making up teams (laughs) (laughs) it's a lesser version of lego masters but if you enjoy lego masters you can probably get something out of this i think my favorite part are probably the different variations of the rube goldberg machines that they have to do as part of their competition like each time they do a competition there's the standard elements that they have to master but then there's also this one special thing that they have to do like in the circus one they had to send some element of their build through three rings of fire Okay, so oh, I get that's why it's not just. I get it. Okay. It's not just do whatever you want. It's like the right. Lego Masters, as you said. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you have to make a car. Or you have to make uh, you know a theme about fantasy or what I see. So you, yeah. it gives them like a stunt they must perform within their creativity. Oh, yeah, and, okay. And their creativity is is really fun. There's a I didn't understand until I watched this just how Domino Toppling has evolved from the days of me watching it, which was. 
I would just watch those guys do those crazy, like 10 million domino topples. Mm-hmm. And it was right. all on one level. Maybe it would go up some stairs and down some stairs. And that was about it. Mm-hmm. Well, now I guess it's advanced. They have these things called topple walls where it's like this sheet of dominoes that just fall down. They knock over whole building structures of dominoes that hmm. they've built and no how tall they build them and what shapes and stuff all matter. So it's curious. It's slightly interesting. Like I said, if you like <laughs> Lego Masters, you might like this, but if you don't watch it, it's not going to, you're not going to miss that for the rest of your life either. Well, it, it sounds like an easy thing to watch. Like you don't want to get super involved in something, but it sounds like it would be fun because I remember watching YouTube videos of somebody spent yeah. the weekend setting something up in the basketball court of the you know, mm-hmm. gymnasium at school and they all topple and then they end with a mascot jumping up and down and shooting a hoop or something, right? So right. Those are fun. So I can imagine yeah. just watching them fall would be entertaining. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. cute. All right. Sweet. <laughs> are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly, and our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show, too. It helps more than you know. When entering the world of art, you'd be smart to dress the part. Gentlemen prefer hands. With all the ladies draped in crepe, the artist loves the human shape. Gentlemen prefer hands. Hands will make you smooth and silky, shapely, sexy. Wear a pair and you could be captured for posterity. Gentlemen, prefer Hanes. I'm going to lead off today's Tech and Toys because I got something that's actually pretty cool. It's a okay. 3D puzzle, but it's not really a puzzle. I think calling it a puzzle is not really true. So okay. it's like the flat cardboard pieces and okay. they're all slotted and shaped and colored, but you put them together, they make something, right? Okay, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's almost like a regular kind of puzzle thing. But this one, the cool thing about it is one, it just looks cool. It's put up by a company called Cubic Fun and it's the Flying Dutchman. So it's a ship mm, okay. and it looks really cool, actually, when you get it all together. Like the ghost ship, Flying yeah. Dutchman? Is that? Yeah, oh, okay. it's like the yeah. ghost ship. Yeah. It actually comes with, even like with LED, green LED lights that you put inside. So oh. when you turn it on, it, like, it glows and all that stuff. It's not hard to do. It's a little time consuming because you do have to put, there's a lot. It's like 300 and something pieces, 360 pieces mm-hmm. to put together here. Some of them are small, different sizes. But they do a good job of kind of turning these flat things into like a 3D model that when you're done, that you could almost like put up and display. So I don't mean to complain, but I think you're doing a slight disservice to this thing. It's really, really <laughs> intricate. I just clicked the link that you provided to us and went and looked at it on Amazon. This looks nothing like the 3D puzzles I've ever built in the past. I built a little oh, no. Firefly foam puzzle oh, no, from Loot like Crate, you know, those kinds of things. This, John, I'm telling you, like the details on this yeah. thing, they have the sails that are torn and ripped and, and look like they have mold and moss growing on oh, them. Okay. The LEDs are in the little, I gotta go look. The little holes for yeah. the cannon. Oh, damn. Wait a minute. Yeah. And the, the front of it too, like the front of the thing is like teeth that come yeah, out. The and prowl, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. This looks detail. like a model yeah. more than a puzzle. Like it doesn't exactly. look like it was foam pieces. Oh, they're not foam. They're cardboard. It's thick cardboard okay. pieces. Huh. They even give you a little tool for punching things out. It's actually really fun to put together because it's not hard, but there's a lot of de- it's like putting together a Lego model, right? Mm-hmm. Not really hard, but there's a lot of little details you got to pay attention to. And that's kind of the feel I get for this. Some pieces fit better than others, you know, that kind of thing. But generally speaking, it's going together really, really well. I'm about halfway done with it. Um, I have another one of these, that's the Empire State Building that I did a bit ago. And this one, though, looks really cool. Uh, so I was going to, you said something about lighting. Mm-hmm. And so I guess it's like LED lights or something. Is it part yeah. of the kit? Is it integrated in or how does it get powered? Can you? Yeah, it gives you a string of LED lights. Okay. And part of the instructions uh-huh. is how to, you know, send the string through all these holes they put into all the, car- the right pieces. I see. So it's so actually, so when you're done, it glows on the inside. I'm guessing they're going to be battery powered at the end because I can't imagine them expecting you to hook a cable up and have that hanging off and making it look not as cool. What they did was pretty cool is the little, I don't know if you look at the picture, but it comes with a stand for the boat to sit on. Right. 
That's where the battery is for the lights. So it's got it. I figured it had to have batteries. That's yes, cool. it yeah. does. Now I'm thinking back to our last episode, Mo, where you had those uh, plug in things that take the place of AA batteries. Yeah, I'm you can leave your leave your boat on all the time if you want. Oh, I'm totally going to leave this thing on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely going to leave this sucker on. And how much did it run? Uh, it's like 30, about 30 bucks, $32. It's not bad. Yeah, it's on sale right now for $32.50. And they okay. have a another version in the same listing called the Black Pirate Ship, which is no LED. And it's not all broken down like the Flying Dutchman is, but that one's slightly cheaper at $24. Oh, that doesn't sound as cool. But it still looks cool, yeah. though. Even the black one, I think, yeah. looks pretty mm-hmm. cool. I, I would go with the Flying Dutchman. That one looks neat. No, no, the Flying Dutchman <laughs> definitely looks very cool. Yeah. And as, and this is, as you put it together, because the pieces are all painted and stuff, you know, you could mm-hmm. see it coming together, which is kind of cool. Right. I can imagine. You get a lot of like satisfaction as you're building it. So pretty cool. I would say definitely if you get a chance, if you, especially if you have somebody you know who likes building models and Legos, mm-hmm. if they want to oh, do yeah. something a little different to do, this is definitely something I think is a good option. So that's what I got. John, what do you got for us this week? Yeah, I have a piece of tech that I received as a gift all the way back in Christmas time. My mom gave me this gift. It was on my wish list, something I was looking for. And I haven't talked about it until now because I really have a chance to try it out until now. I mentioned that I went on a, uh, a business trip finally uh, mm-hmm. over the last couple of weeks. And I asked on my Christmas wish list for well, these days, phones no longer have headphone jacks. So my noise canceling headphones that I would use on the airplane have nowhere to plug them in anymore. So I was looking for some truly wireless noise canceling headphones because you try to listen to things on the plane, you, you can't hear it over the hum of the engine. Oh, yeah. So I was looking at and received, thank you, mom. Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> some Sure Aonic. 215 TW2s. So okay. that's a bunch of numbers and stuff. Effectively, <laughs> yeah. these are in-ear earbuds, but they also feature this over-the-ear piece and then like a bulb that sits just behind your earlobe, just below that, that has buttons on it. Several little nuggets of data to talk about on these. First, they're very expensive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's why they're run. on my wish list because I'm like, eh, 230 bucks. Ooh. Ooh. So I mean, it's, I mean, it's not crazy for wireless earbuds these days, but for noise canceling ones, you know, you want to get something good. So kind of expensive. What I like about them, uh, first of all, the noise canceling is great. Even on a plane, you put in the noise canceling mode and it absolutely is just, I mean, it, it everything goes from shh. It just shuts down like that noise of right. the hum of the engines goes away. All the buttons are completely tactile buttons. They're not the touch buttons like it would be on modern uh, AirPods or something where if you mm-hmm. accidentally touch it, it's going to pause your music. It's a clicky button. And the best hotkey on those buttons is a double tap of either earbud goes from completely noise canceling to hyper awareness of the outside world. So like you can hear voices, you can hear people, you can hear stuff. It's bringing in like it has microphones, which is how it cancels noise. And it routes that stuff right into your ear. So it's almost like you're not wearing earbuds. So, you know, somebody talks to you and you double tap it and you can hear them very clearly like you're wearing a hearing aid. Like it's really, really super clear. Wow. If I had any criticism about them, if you're looking for a wireless noise canceling earbud, is that the over the ear portion, depending on the shape of your ears, might become like, you know, you wear glasses for a long time and they start to kind of irritate the the tops of the backs of your ears. You could encounter that with these. I found them to not be as comfortable as just pure in-ear earbuds. But for the features and functions that they have, and we've talked about wireless earbuds on the mm-hmm. shows many times, but these are just, they're a top tier one that if you haven't talked to somebody that has had them, you probably wouldn't pull the trigger before you knew that they actually worked as well as they do. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you mentioned, the, you know, the over the ear, which I actually kind of like because they're more secure to me, mm-hmm. but- how does it work with glasses if you wear glasses? Well, good news, because I'm old, I have to wear reading glasses all the time <laughs> when I'm watching, watching you know, t- movies on the plane or something. And they're fine because there's a place, they, they're not really thick around the back of your ears. Okay. So if, if you could imagine, they just kind of tuck next to the over ear thing. They don't interfere with it at all. So I have no, I had no problem wearing my glasses along with them. How's the battery life? Uh, well, funny you ask, they have a long battery life. I never had to recharge them throughout a five hour flight. That's so they good. Stayed okay. on the entire time, completely working. And as you can imagine, they come in a little box that mm-hmm. is a charging case. So you don't have to find power to charge. Gotcha. I think it has two and a half or three recharges in the box if you just throw them in there and leave them in there for a bit. So they'll recharge. And the box itself has a little button you can click like... um we have a battery bank and you click a button and it has a row of lights to show you how much power is left in it. Mm-hmm. That's right on the case. You can see on the case how much battery uh, recharge is left in the case. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. For the price, it's, it's pretty steep. Oof. But if you need good ones and you need wireless ones that are Bluetooth, 
These really foot the bill. Wow. And these are definitely yeah. higher tier for sure. They are. They certainly are. Made by Shure, which is a big name in, in uh, audio equipment. So w- well made and definitely deliver good sound. Very cool. So George, how about you? What do you got in the world of tech that you're checking out? Uh, I have everything. That's good. Well, that's that's a little vague. <laughs> Will we have time to cover it all? Yeah, yeah I, I, I have no questions. <laughs> I have no questions. We, well, we should. No, it's the name of the piece of software. It's called everything. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So like many of us out there, I'm sure you guys probably have a favorite little tech video channel on YouTube that you like to watch where they tell mm. you about new and interesting things in the world of PC or phones or video games or whatever. And mm-hmm. I have one of those as well. This person in one of their shows a while back, maybe, I don't know, a month ago, they were going through several different items. Some of them were plugins for your browsers. Some of them were little mini applications for your desktop PC itself. And this is one of those that was a desktop PC application. So it's called everything. And the reason why it's called everything is it takes an index of everything on your PC and becomes the ultimate search engine all at once. So it stores everything itself somehow, magically, the first time you load it, it takes maybe a minute or so to go through your entire PC, or at least mine it did. And mm-hmm. then from then forward, anytime you open it, it's got a list. It just has the list of everything in there. And you type in the little search bar at the top and it pairs down the list until you find what you're looking for. It's brilliant. So it does like a search. We were trying to do some searches for some stuff that John wanted for an upcoming podcast. And I'm like, okay, well, let me get out directory Ah. opus and do its Mm -hmm. search and everything. Because directory opus is a tool John and I have used for Mm -hmm. years. Uh, It's a really fun tool back from the Amiga days. That's a good file manager tool. But its search is just like Internet Explorer, Windows Explorer. It it grinds and grinds and grinds. Mm -hmm. But this thing, I was like, oh, I forgot I had this. Let me open it up. I opened it up, typed in one of the names of the thing that John was looking for. Oh, there it is. Copy. Done. Oh, this one's not here. This one's not here. This one's not here. Oh, there's one. And it was so easy and simple. (laughs) It literally took me three minutes to do like 10 searches that encompassed my entire PC. Sick. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> when I saw this listed, you put a link in the in the card for mm-hmm. for the show, and I'm like, "What is this?" I was trying to figure yeah. it out. What the heck are you talking about, right? So I clicked on it, went and downloaded. I said, "Let's give it a shot." When I started it, of course, it was empty. It had never run on my computer right. before, right. and so I said, "Let's search for like something." I'm sure I have a file named Backtrack. I just searched for that. I know it exists somewhere out there, and it, I'm like, "Well, it's doing nothing." I don't. There's no. There's no wheel. It's not thinking. Nothing's going on. Blam! Suddenly, there were like 50 search results. It, it found everything, everywhere on removable drives mm-hmm. and in my cloud stuff. It had found all of that, and then I found out it's also searching inside of text files for me. Yes. So if I mention Absolutely. something inside of a file. File, it shows me that file, not by its name, but by what's in it. And then I'm like, hmm. And then I plugged in my external drive that I hadn't had plugged in. And it went, oh, let me think a second. Here's 60 more results. And once it searches a thing one time, it yep. has that information forever. Is that right? Oh, I yeah. want it. So it seems the next time you so open fast. it, that stuff is just <laughs> instantly there and you can search for it. Now, obviously, if you delete or move stuff around, it's going to take a few seconds for it to, to find it again. figure that out. But man, it's kind of like some of the backup tools that we use at my work where it okay. creates an index and it keeps that index, I'm guessing, in a database or a list file or something somewhere. And then it parses that list whenever you're typing in. And instead of it being a search, it's more like a filter. Everything is displayed on your right. computer. Yeah. Yep. And when you type in in the search bar, instead of it searching for the thing, it's just filtering what it's already got in its list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I saw. Once it indexed, you start typing and it eliminates files that don't match the criteria, just like an instant search. It even does regex and stuff if you want to be fancy with it. Mm-hmm. My only wow. criticism is I want it to become what happens when I push control F anywhere on the planet from now on. It's like, oh my goodness, I need a shortcut so this is always available. Oh, where well, I wonder how it does it so fast though, because without indexing, that's pretty amazing. No, it does. That's what I'm saying. It does, it does index. create its own index. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, it, they said to search a million files it would take about a minute mm-hmm. to index wow. it and then it's got it. Yeah. I'm like, holy and I can testify, I probably have a million files and it was less than a minute. It was And done. it's not like the Windows indexing or any of the other tools out there, they re-index every time you go to look at a specific folder or drive or directory. Mm, right. This thing has its index and it only updates the changes. That's why I said it's very much like my backup tools that I use at work. Mm-hmm. Right. They have an index of a point in time, the first time that whatever server it is that we backed it up. And then from that point forward, 
I'm only ever backing up the Delta files, the changes that happen mm-hmm. between that first time and whatever time I'm mm-hmm. backing it up later. And, and somehow it's free. It's yeah. a, you can grab oh, really? it. Use it for wow. nothing. Totally free. Yeah. I think that was the title of the uh, video that I watched where like 10 free things to make your PC experience happier. Like one of the yeah. ones I'm going to talk about next time that we get together is called Wiki Wand. So mm-hmm. it takes Wikipedia pages and reformats them into something that looks good as opposed to the way that Wikipedia looks right now. Mm. Wow. And it's really intuitive and it looks pretty and it's nice. A lot of those types of things. Where was everything on the list? Was it number one or further down? It wasn't a numbered list as far as rank. Oh, there's a, oh, some, okay. a list of yeah. some, like 10 things you could get. Okay. Well, right now it's number one in my heart. I'll wait and see how your, <laughs> your, your later ones turn out. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Novel Conversations, a podcast about the world's greatest stories. I'm your host, Frank Lavallo, and for each episode of Novel Conversations, I talk to two readers about one book. And together, we summarize the story for you. We introduce you to the characters, we tell you what happens to them, and we read from the book along the way. So if you love hearing a good story, you're in the right place. Our ninth season is coming this fall. Tune in to hear from some of the all-time great authors, Charles Dickens, Jules Verne, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and more. Subscribe to Novel Conversations wherever you listen to podcasts. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. Purina Puppy Chow helps little puppies grow into big puppies. But then its job is only half done, because even after he looks full grown on the outside, inside his muscles are still forming, and his bones are still growing for about a full year. That's why he needs a full year of the extra nutrition in Puppy Chow. Puppy Chow for a full year, till he's full grown. This is the main event of the podcast. For the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world, ladies and gentlemen, it's time! All right, ladies and gentlemen, time to talk about games. Mm-hmm. We look forward to this segment every time we have this podcast. I'm looking forward to finding out what you guys are playing. So let's go ahead and start off with John. John, what have you been playing lately? Yeah, well, I mentioned I was on a business trip, so I didn't get to technically play anything new or fresh, but I want to talk to you about a Kickstarter oh, God. that's just about to wrap up. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's actually happening? It's happening right now. If you listen okay. to this, I think it ends May 11th, and it's for 8-bit themed playing cards. Okay. Were, oh, no. What? This is my segment. You don't get to list that one. That's not a damn game. Well, no, no it is, because you no. can play games with cards. You can play games with cards, Aye. and the cards themselves are themed after like Atari 2600 and Pitfall. And oh, you're really reaching. This is a toy. This is not a game. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with George on this one, actually. Uh, as much as it pains me to say that, but George is right. Because <laughs> well, that's it. not really it's not really a game. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool Kickstarter. Don't it get is. me wrong. Yeah, absolutely. It is. And I wish that I could afford it, but I'm broke. So, I mean, it, it's cool. I'm glad, you know, we can share it with the listeners. <laughs> you can tell them about it, but it's not a game. I, I beg to differ. It is a game. But it is. <laughs> about seven years ago, this guy put out some playing cards. And so he pinged me because he was doing a new Kickstarter. And he has even more playing cards that are kind of eight bit pixely things like that he's about halfway funded as it stands today i backed it and bought about i don't know about 20 or so decks of cards from oh, him boy. different styles <laughs> yeah, it's too crap. i know uh, but he has tokens and coins and all kinds of neat stuff that go with it. Uh, but we'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested. He has a back catalog of stuff you can buy. But if you want to jump in on this Kickstarter, uh, it ends May 11th. So just less than a week after this show comes out. And since George wants me to kind of conform to the way he does things in his segment here, <laughs> I'm going to do what George does and have two things to talk about instead of one. I kind of sneak it what in. What the fuck? No. Oh, no, no, no. That's a total George thing. Mo I don't me care. Up okay. That's a George. Your name is not George. Last time. <laughs> I checked your name was John. You're right. But I, I want to emulate you, George. You don't even spell it the right way and your name is John. <laughs> I would beg a differ again. <laughs> There's just one more Kickstarter coming up that I wanted to mention. This other one I said is about to end. This one is not yet started. If you've ever joined us for one of our Discord gaming nights, a game we like to go back to do over and over is a social game. It's called Use Your Words. Oh, yes. Okay. You guys remember that oh, they'll yeah. take like a scene from a movie and you have to like uh, change the make tub. A, a change 
change the subtitles or right. you know make a headline or whatever. Thing's been out for I don't know seven or eight years and hasn't been updated. Really? Has been saying, oh, I wish wow. this. Yeah. Uh, well, a Kickstarter is coming. They're writing "Use Your Words Two" is going to be funded via Kickstarter shortly. And uh, right now, you can go to the Kickstarter page and get notified when they are going to kick off their Kickstarter. But if you like Jackbox style, you know, social games you could play together, live streaming with your friends remotely, "Use Your Words" is great. And "Use Your Words Two is coming. Just like the other one, Mo. I'll just, assuming George will allow it. I'll have you put a link <laughs> down <laughs> in the show notes well, I do uh, the show for both notes of those. I mean, at least this one's a game. It's a Kickstarter, but it's a game. At some point, Kickstarter better start paying me for my segment. Yeah. It, it'll be a game someday, right? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> it's a game to be. Yeah. So that's what I'm not actually playing, right. but going to be playing eventually. Okay. This is my segment. You're done. I'm cutting you off. I'm going to jump <laughs> oh, onto my thing. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I've been actually playing a game. That's why I'm taking over. Um, it's one of the mobile <laughs> games, though, on the phone. So it's not a PC game. It's not a board game, but it is a mobile game. And it's kind of mm-hmm. fun. It's called Cody Cross. C-O-D-Y-C-R-O-S-S. Okay. The reason why I'm playing this, it got suggested to me while I was playing that Wordle app that is not the real Wordle, but is a, right, yeah. a Wordle-ish game. And I've been playing a lot of those games online. Like, you know, we talked about the one that's the movie one. And then somebody else suggested one that's been driving me crazy called Nerdle, which is all math problems. Mm -hmm. And because I'm a big math guy, I love that one. But good Lord, is it hard to figure out. (laughs) But Cody Cross is another word tile letter based app. And in it, you have this cute little alien explorer guy who's coming to Earth, at least at the first part of the game. The puzzles are all based around... I guess science fiction-y space exploration, Earth exploration style themes. Each little group that you play through has five different puzzles. And in those five puzzles, they can have anywhere from eight different words to 15 or 20 different words. And they can be varying lengths, although all the words on one puzzle are the same length. So Mm. you might have a puzzle that has 15 seven-letter words. And with that, there is the horizontal words that you have to guess based on clues that they give you, like a crossword puzzle. But there's also a vertical word that spells out something that relates to the little explorer's journey so to speak, Mm, like uh, Milky Way Galaxy might be the vertical word. And so the letters are spaced throughout the words that you have to say. Oh, so maybe like a space and ship or things like that or star. Oh, okay. But they're all vertical. Hmm. So it's like the S is in the first word and the P is in the second word, so on and so forth. You know, what's coincidental is maybe a week ago, I went looking for, I'm like, I don't have a crossword game. And I got one, I think it was called Daily Crossword. And it's just a vanilla crossword puzzle. Mm -hmm. What it was lacking was something to pull you through like some kind of a, a thread, not on a story necessarily, but you know, you mentioned having this little guy and he's on a journey and that's what I was looking for. It's a, it's a cutesy <laughs> little theme. Um, there are interesting other parts of the game as well that get revealed or unlocked as you play more of the games. Like I just finished group four or five or something like that. And it, opened up or unlocked a crossword style version of the game that I can play as well. Mm. So as you go through, there are those types of things that get revealed and unlocked. There's also little hint helper type of things like one little character will reveal a specific letter in the word you're trying to guess. Another one, you drop him on the row and your keyboard only shows the letters that make up that word and no other letters. You just have to figure out how they go together, which is kind of cool. There's one guy that he's kind of expensive he re- just reveals the word outright to you in case you're just truly stumped. They're like power up things. It is ad supported. And I want to talk about that for just a second. Okay. Yep. So the ads pop up at the beginning of each group usually, and also probably after two or three puzzles of the group. Now there are also, as you play and progress throughout the game, solicited versus unsolicited ad. The unsolicited ads just pop up and you have to wait until they're done. Mm -hmm. That's fine. There Mm -hmm. are solicited ads though that you can choose to watch. And if you do, then you get like some little bonus chips or some little hint things that might Mm -hmm. help you out, that kind of thing. 
However, you can remove the ads in this game. And this is what okay. I want to talk about. They're $7.99 to remove the ads Ooh. in this app. That's, and that's what I'm like. If you remember last time I talked about the Wordle app, that was $5.99 to remove yeah. those ads. Mm. Yep. These apps are starting to increase that remove the ads price that I've noticed lately. They used to be $0.99, cents, yeah, $1.99, $2.99 yeah, yeah. at the yeah, outside. Yeah. Yep. Now I've seen ones that have reoccurring fees like one of your crossword puzzle apps, John. Whoa. Reoccurring mm-mm. per month or per year fees to remove the ads. I'm like, what Ooh, the? No. Yeah. It's getting a little crazy. It's starting to turn me off from these games, which are cute and fun and little 10 minute time wasters. But if 10 minutes you're playing and eight minutes of it is ads and it costs you 10 bucks to remove the ads, I might as well go play a PC game at that point. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's steep. In fact, I, that's what I was going to ask was how do they use the ads? It sounds like they use them judiciously, but to get rid of them is just, that's like, I was going to say, like I was going to say four ninety nine in my mind was like, that sounds all fair-ish if it's a great game. It would have to be an outstanding game. I wouldn't consider yeah. this a four ninety nine game. This would Mm-mm. be a two ninety nine game for me. Yeah, that would be yeah. fair. The outside. Yeah. yeah, but four ninety nine, seven ninety nine, nah. It, so, I, so I'm just gonna suffer through the ads until they piss me off enough that I quit playing the game, and they'll have lost a use. So you have not unlocked them. So you're just, you're gonna let it. Keep I'm just going. gonna yeah. let them go. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So that could damage a game like that. I mean, I know they're trying to make revenue, but yeah, man, if you if you price it too high, like you said, what you're gonna do is you're gonna irritate the guy till he leaves, and then you're not gonna get any ads at all. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So exactly. Yeah. That's a well, scary trend. So small little short game. Don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm really kind of interested in Mo's game because if the teaser at the beginning of the episode is any indication, this sounds like something I would really enjoy playing. So Mo, <laughs> tell us what it is that you have for us today. Okay, so the title of the game is, and I have to say this the right way, Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards Duel at Skullfire. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you have to say it like that because it's, it is a crazy, this game actually has a lot of luck involved to it, but it's just so much fun to play. You don't really care. It's more like just playing the game itself is fun. So you're each a, a wizard of different types and your goal is basically you have to win two duels against the other wizards. And how you do that is that you get cards, spell cards, and mm-hmm. a, a spell has three components. So there's the uh, source, the quality, and then the, I think it's delivery is the last one. And the, mm-hmm. and so you, your cards are random, so you may not have all three parts, but you try to build all three parts. And the artwork on these is like like almost like a 70s underground comic sort of art. Just mm-hmm, sort of that right. weird, just weird kind of slightly stone looking. Like the Hot Rod magazine looking yeah, exactly. guy with a gear shift. Yeah, yeah. And then when you read the spells out loud, they're just hilarious. One that we had here, I just found a sample. is like, Bleemax Brainiacs, Two-Face, Testicule. I mean, and so, <laughs> <laughs> and so... And the thing is that when you're playing the game, when you say your spell, I don't care who you are, you're going to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they mixed garbage pail kids with a D and D board game. Oh yeah, and then <laughs> and, and when you cast your spell, you read the three cards, and each one does something different, and it does damage to your. And you have like a card that has like your hit points and that kind of thing on it. The way the game is played, I found out about it by watching Tabletop. Remember the show that? Mm-hmm. Yep. We yeah. did way back when. Well, we, yep. Mm-hmm. And we just played it over the last weekend, which is the first time I played this thing in years, actually. And I just forgot just how much just stupid fun this game is because you're trying to put together these ridiculous spell names. And sometimes you're playing the game. You're like, okay, I don't care if this spell is not what I want. It just sounds too cool to not say. (laughs) (laughs) If you can work test to kill into a spell, I'm going to say it. You have to do that, right? If you can't say test to kill, I mean, what's the point? And a lot of it is like very random. It's very, you can be very vindictive, which is fun also. Mm -hmm. Choose the player. Choose the most powerful player. You know, do oh, this. The, the screw your neighbor aspect of a game. Yes, yep. absolutely. Which is also more of the fun. Yep. And if you win two games, you win the whole thing. So the games themselves are really quick. You can play an entire game in less than a half hour. Oh, neat. And again, it's a game that's been out for a while. They have a whole bunch of expansions out for it to expand the wizards and the spells. And the other thing they do, which is really cool on the card art, is when you put the three components of the spell together, the art all fits. Oh, it lines up. It all lines like up. A, like a mad fold-in kind exactly. of thing? Exactly. Like it all uh. lines up. And then if you have ones that have the same type of component, which increases the power of your spell, then they match up like really well. Like the colors mm. and everything lines up. So I have just one quick request. Yeah. Uh, we've talked a bit about looking forward this year, once again, as always, to the Southern Fried Gaming Expo. Yeah. I told you I'm bringing Dark Tower. I'm bringing Elixir. This sounds like a must. 
sauce that we have to try. I will when we totally all get bring together it. at SMG. Yes, <laughs> I'll totally bring this one. It's, it's just stupid fun. I can't wait to test to kill you. Oh, <laughs> you won't be the first, <laughs> nor the last. I'm nor sure. The last. <laughs> I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe, and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Nervous is meeting your boyfriend's family. All 16 of them. Nervous is why there's new soft and dry. Soft and dry roll on. Nothing keeps you drier when you're nervous. Nervous is taking your driver's test for the fourth time. Nervous is why there's new soft and dry. Nothing keeps you drier, yet it never stings most girls, even after shaving. My fellow classmates. Nervous is why there's new soft and dry. As we round out the back end of the show, we always like to take a moment here to talk about what we're looking at now or looking forward to between now and the next time we get together to record the show. Uh, And I have a few that I'm looking forward to. First of all, there's a brand new revival of the Kids in the Hall coming to Amazon on May 13th. Yeah, just right around the corner. Uh, And all those guys who they were fantastic as a troupe and they went on to do their own things like the Second City Television guys who kind of, you know, that was their origin. These guys came up together in comedy. Can't wait to see that they do with that. It looks fun. The next is another, and I talked about use your words. There's another social game you can play kind of remotely with friends on Discord or wherever you do screen sharing based on riff tracks called Ooh. riff tracks the game so uh, we all know riff tracks if you're not familiar it's mystery science theater 3000 guys mm-hmm. who record just audio tracks you can play along with popular mainstream movies your you know avengers and spider-man and jaws mainstream things they don't have access to uh you just play the audio along with it this is a game based on that made by those guys where you either pick the best riff or make up your own riff on scenes from movies that they have oh that's gonna be good and yeah it's coming and may 5th right around the corner And speaking of May 5th, the thing I have said I'm looking forward to is finally going to happen the day this episode comes out. And that's Star Trek Strange New Worlds premiering on Paramount Plus. (laughs) You can bank on it now. Go to your bookie. Will John be talking about this in the next episode? Yes, absolutely. He will. (laughs) So you can look forward to that coming up. I certainly am. So, George, we have to be first on the list and get this on there. No, I'm going to go make the card right away (laughs) and put my name on it and I'll lock it. <laughs> uh, Mo, what do you got coming up? Uh, let's see. Some home renovations, which I'm actually looking forward to. I'm getting all the floors of my house redone, which is a pain in the ass, but my house is 20 something years old. I really need to do this. So I'm happy that's finally getting done. Sounds super exciting. <laughs> Well, it actually is because honestly- If you're a homeowner, it is. And I'm also using this excuse to do other things like redo my studio slash office. So because Mm, I got to take everything out to do the floors, I'm going to rebuild it the way I want. So I'm looking forward to doing all that. All right. So uh, the other thing I'm looking forward to is something I can't really talk about because John says I can't. No, no, no. You can't look forward to Strange New World. I think he put a gag, he put a legal gag order on us that we cannot speak of this until after he does the next episode. Good thing I I don't do the final edit because I'll say whatever I want. I don't know. I think it was a waste of money in his part, but he got a lawyer. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, everybody. Priorities. But, yep. But the thing I'm really looking forward to is the second part of season four of Ozark, which is actually dropping mm. today, mm-hmm. the day we're recording, April 29th. I don't know if you guys follow Ozark. I, I know you George it? does. Yeah. You watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched season four yet because I was oh, waiting for Jason two to Bateman, come out. is that right? Yep. Jason Bateman. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Let me tell you, the, the first part of the season, I was just like, what the hell? And the way it ended, I was like, oh, I, I really, really just can't wait to see this. It's a great show. And I don't know if it's the last season, but either way, I'm just looking forward to it. I think they said it is the final season. Is it? Maybe. And which I'm, was okay. Probably I'm, why I'm actually gonna, okay with that. Yeah. If they do the, it well. The, they're going yeah. out with a bang, though, for sure. There you go. Yep. All right. So that's what I'm looking forward to. How about you, George? Uh, well, uh, so I have some downtime right now due to some situations with family and whatnot. Um, during that downtime, one of the things that I'm looking forward to doing a little bit more of that I've been putting off is doing 
doing some writing. Uh, mm. I've mentioned mm. it a little mm. bit in our Discord channel for the people who are over there. So if you're interested in what that writing is about, check out our Discord channel. Go join uh, nice genx.com slash Discord. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm he's, working he's, all the time. I well know. done. He's, he's <laughs> set that right in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other That's thing I'm said. looking forward to during this time is a little bit more gameplay with some of the games from the Stand with Ukraine <laughs> bundle. You got plenty. Or 133 <laughs> items in that bundle. So <laughs> yeah. There's plenty there to choose from and enjoy and try. Yep. And then the final thing that I'm looking forward to just kind of happened out of random happenstance this week. Uh, we have a friend who runs a convention here in the southeast region of the United States called Infinity Con. And oh, sure. he was connected with another person who works the Shakespeare Festival plays. And one of the people who's going to be in one of their plays coming up soon is Kevin McDonald from kids in the hall. Of Fame that John was just mentioned. talked nice. about awesome. Very so nice. Our infinity con showrunner friend, Dave passed along our information. The person who runs the Shakespeare thing got in contact with me. And now this coming week, I'm going to be sitting down for a 30 minute interview with Kevin McDonald. Very which cool. Should be oh, cool. A blast. We're going to talk a that little bit fun. about the Shakespeare thing, but then I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking all about kids in the hall both from the past and their new series that's coming up soon very cool that's awesome i can't oh, that, that should be i can't wait to hear what he has to say yeah mm-hmm. me too i'm really curious no, no, both about kids in the hall and what's he doing at a shakespeare festival that's really interesting, interesting. <laughs> wow yeah good on you yeah well that's hey awesome. that is gonna wrap it up for this edition of the show before we bid you adieu i want to real quickly thank a brand new financial supporter over on patreon Wade has joined us at that $10 oh, level. Wow. Thank you so Thank much, you. Wade, man. Uh, Wade is actually a friend we knew back in our previous life, George, in the Star Trek mm-hmm. Club. Yep. Uh, I reconnected with him and he said, what have you been up to? And I told him about Gen X growing up and he enjoyed so much and appreciated what we were doing. He wanted to support us. So thank you, Wade. We really appreciate you and everyone who commits to us financially to keep, keep us supported, whether it be on Patreon or over on YouTube. You really, really just keep gas in the tank and keep us doing what we're doing. So thank you so much for that. That then is going to wrap up this episode 122 of the show. We'll be back in two weeks with another one. Next week, of course, is our Backtrack, where we pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. Backtracks that are always popular are ones based on music. And it being 2022, we are going back 40 years in time looking oh, at God, the... 40 years? Yes, 40 years to 1982. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mo. that part out. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> we'll bleep it in your edition. Beep, you won't hear that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. But we're going to look at songs that top the charts on the Billboard Hits Hot 100 throughout 1982, the ones that oh, were on God. the charts for the longest time. And spoiler alert here, this is a damn fine list of songs. <laughs> I'm going through it. Holy moly, George prepared the list for us, and I'm like, did he cherry pick these? He just picked songs no, he no. liked? No. Point, of, point of clarification, <laughs> these songs yes. were number one on the number Hot 100 list. Okay. Yeah. So they're only number one songs, and they had to meet a specific criteria, which we'll talk about in the show, in order to make our list. Yeah. Man, Oof. and what a playlist these make. Oh, really yeah. good. If you're a music fan, especially of the 80s, you won't want to miss this backtrack coming up next week. Uh, until then, I am John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Always fun, man. And fourth listener, it's you, though. We all appreciate most of all, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. Jet X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. No shows till sunrise. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. I am John, and joining me as always are my other two. Okay, oh, stop trying to be original. I, I like you to mess with you. Other two, what? I'm like, what's <laughs> no, he going to say here, other, George? <laughs> oh, what should I call them? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, I was thinking today I was going to say something. Other two fucktards. Yeah. I mean, my <laughs> other fucktards. <laughs> I think he was just looking for a blooper to add on, just in no, case that we was didn't not fuck the, anything this else was, up in the rest of the episode. I have never made an intentional blooper. Not necessary. Okay. First of all, there's a brand new revived new kids, new kids in the block. I'm 
Bruce Martin, host of Pit Pass Indy. Each week, I go behind the scenes of the NTT IndyCar Series and introduce our listeners to the biggest stars of IndyCar, which features the Indianapolis 500 as its cornerstone event. The men and women that compete in IndyCar may be the bravest athletes in all of sport as danger lurks around every corner. They are able to look danger in the eye without flinching. That is why the NTT IndyCar Series features the best racing on the planet. Join me every week as we talk to the stars of IndyCar, including the legends of the Indianapolis 500 on Pit Pass Indy from Evergreen Podcast. <laughs> 